welcome to the Children's Museum of Cleveland. My name is Miss Kelsey and I'm here to show you another science experiment you can do at home with an adult friend's help. Today's experiment is strawberry DNA extraction. Now that sounds very fancy, but you probably have everything you need in your kitchen. So what you need for today's experiment are a plastic bag, some fresh strawberries, a couple different empty cups or jars to pour things in. I have a test tube, which is going to be a smaller jar I'll use. I have a fancy flask, but you could just use a cup to pour your solution into. I also have some measuring cups and a few things to measure different tablespoons or teaspoons. Finally, I have some table salt. I just have some regular tap water. I also have some dish soap. And the very last things I will need are a funnel, a coffee filter, and I have a pipette, but a knife, a butter knife, or a stick will work as well. So the very first thing you need to do is take your fresh strawberries, and then with an adult friend's help, you need to remove the green stem. So your adult friend can help cut that off, or I'm just gonna use a pair of scissors here at the museum. I just cut the green tops off, just got my strawberries, I'm gonna put them in my bag. I wanna make sure there's a good seal on my bag so nothing can escape, because I am now gonna squish and smash these strawberries. So I'm squishing my strawberries in my bag just till I start to see some of this red liquid and these kind of chunks of strawberry. I'm not going to worry about making it perfect just so I start to have this consistency. I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to take my flask, but again, if you just have a big empty glass or jar, that will work too. And I'm going to be adding in my water, my salt, and my soap. So for my table salt, I'm going to add one teaspoon. I've already measured out my teaspoon of salt and I'm going to pour it into my jar. For my water, I need one third cup of water. So I'm going to pour a third cup of water in and then pour it right into the same jar as my salt. And then finally, I need a tablespoon of dish soap. I've already measured a tablespoon and I'm going to go ahead and pour it in. I might even need a little bit of a spoon to help scrape some of that soap out just to get as much as possible into my jar. So here I have that one third cup of water, a teaspoon of salt, a tablespoon of soap. I'm just gonna give it a quick swirl to stir it. You could always use a spoon. And then this solution is gonna go right into my bag with that strawberry. So I'm gonna pour it in. Set my jar aside, I don't need that right now. Give the bag a good seal, just to make sure nothing escapes. And I'm just gonna squeeze it and kind of smash that all together to mix it. So I'm just gonna give it a couple good squeezes, maybe break up some of those bigger strawberry chunks that are still in there. Can pound on it a little bit. And once I start to have this kind of bubbly, pinkish color solution, I'm ready for my next step. So now that I've mixed that all together, I'm gonna pull out that test tube I had. Again, if you have a small cup instead, that's okay. I'm gonna grab my funnel and put it on top of the test tube. And then my coffee filter goes inside. This is just going to ensure that any liquid in the bag goes into the test tube and any of those strawberry chunks stay up here in the coffee filter. If you don't have a funnel or a coffee filter, you can just carefully arrange a paper towel. It will do the same thing. So I'm just gonna pour that right in. And we should start to see the liquid enter the test tube. And all of my chunks of strawberry are kind of staying near the top. And I actually don't need too much. I only need to fill it about halfway. So since I'm already near that point, I'm just gonna take that empty jar from earlier, pick up my funnel and filter, and just put it to the side. So now I have my test tube or small glass that's about half full with my strawberry solution. So the very last thing we need is something called isopryl alcohol. 
Now this is an item that you might have in your medicine cabinet at home. Now you want to put this in the freezer for a little bit because you want it to be nice and cold. So I just pulled it out of the freezer. It's very cold. And I need to add about 90 milliliters or three tablespoons of the alcohol to my solution. I have learned that sometimes you might even need less than that. Once you have a good layer of the alcohol on top of your strawberry, you might be able to stop right there. So once again, I'm opening my cold alcohol. I'm pouring it into my measuring device, adding it to that strawberry soap solution. Now I'm just about at the top, so I'm gonna stop pouring. I have my strawberry solution right here at the bottom, a layer of the alcohol on top, and if all goes well, I should now be able to use my pipette, or again, if you have a thin stick at home, I should be able to pull out my thin layer of DNA. I might have to fish around a little bit. There it is. It almost looks like I'm pulling some snot out of the solution, but this is actually my piece of DNA. So you could go ahead. I like to put it on a piece of dark paper so I can see it a little clearer. You can look at it, you can study it, you can try a different fruit or vegetable. Maybe you want to try to see if you can get the DNA from a blueberry. Maybe you want to try to get the DNA from a carrot. Anything that was once alive should have DNA and you can try this extraction at home. But from the Children's Museum of Cleveland, we will see you next time. For more programming like this, see cmcleveland.org.